Hi, I'm actor Scott Beyer here, and today we're going to go over probably what is the most important cofactor for normal, healthy thyroid physiology, and that is selenium. Now, uh, selenium is used in a lot of different things in the body, but th per gram or per weight, you will not find any other organ in the body that has as much selenium as the thyroid gland, and we'll get into that in just a sec. Now, if you guys seen any of our other videos, you know that really healthy thyroid physiology begins with a healthy brain. So there's this area of our brain called the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland will release a stimulating hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH for short. Most of you guys, if you have ever gotten your thyroid checked, have had this marker run, okay? Now what that'll do is that will tell the thyroid to start making hormone. Now the process of thyroid hormone production is really, really, really highly oxidative. Creates a lot of inflammation and that inflammation and oxidation needs to be contained. It's one of the many reasons why they think or, uh, or thyroid autoimmunity is so prevalent because of how much oxidation occurs when you're producing some of that hormone. Now, our body needs these things called antioxidants to try and contain some of the oxidation so it doesn't you know, go, go out of control. And when it comes to antioxidants in our body, the most powerful one, the, the, the master antioxidant, is this molecule called glutathione. Now, in order for our body to actually make glutathione, there's this enzyme that's really, really highly dependent on selenium. And that's called glutathione peroxidase. And then there's also another one that's uh, really selenium dependent called thyroidoxin reductase. And those enzymes, particularly the glutathione one, help contain the amount of inflammation and oxidation that it, uh, our body or our thyroid uh, creates while producing thyroid hormone, okay? Now, if you guys have seen any of our other videos, you know by now that what the thyroid produces is majority T4, okay? About 93%, I'm hoping I don't mess up my drawing here, 93% is T4, and T4, um, there's very little metabolic activity. It's, it's very largely metabolically inactive compared to its T3 counterpart, okay? And what, what about 7% of what comes out of the gland is, is T3, okay? Now, if the majority of what comes out of the gland is inactive, where do we get the majority of the active form of thyroid hormone, which is T3? Well, what will happen is our body will take uh, certain binding globulins and take T4 and escort it to other tissues, like our liver and gut primarily, but it'll take it to a lot of different tissues in the body. And primarily, even more so in the liver, there are these enzymes called deiodinase enzymes. And what these will do is they will take a molecule of iodine, so T4 has four molecules of iodine, and strip it of one of its iodine molecules and make it into the very largely metabolically active form of T3. Folks, if you've heard what thyroid hormone does to your body's metabolism, like it hits the gas on cellular metabolism and uh, it helps you you know, burn calories a little bit quicker and make new cells and, and replicate structural proteins, that is primarily T3. Okay, so if your doctor is at very least not checking this, they aren't looking at the end of the line and there's a lot of things that can occur from hormone production in the gland to the actual finished product. And in order to get the actual finished product, we need this enzyme right here. And guess what this enzyme needs? Selenium. Okay, so selenium is important in a lot, multiple different steps in normal healthy thyroid physiology. Selenium in and of itself has been shown to decrease thyroid autoimmunity caused by iodine toxicity. Okay, now what are some really good sources of selenium in your diet? Well, these are things like Brazil nuts, certain types of meats and seafood, and uh, a lot of vegetables, they used to be high in selenium, but they're, what they're noticing is that as we're kind of mass producing crops, the amount of selenium content in our soil and therefore in our, our vegetables is decreasing. So if you can eat locally grown food, where typically these farmers aren't like mass producing their crops, like some other you know, big farms are, the odds are is you're gonna be getting higher amounts of selenium in that food. So if you guys found this interesting, um, you can either subscribe to our Facebook or our YouTube channel where we're gonna be producing videos like this on a weekly basis. I hope you guys learned a little something here. 
Um, go ahead and, and uh, subscribe to our Facebook page. I'm Dr. Scott Beyer. Have a wonderful afternoon. <music>